Okay, I'm milling about with Cara Buono, and she's starring in The Girl from Plainville. Hi. Hi, good morning, Robin. I like your background. Thank you. Did you hang out at this beach? It's beautiful. I had been there, yeah. I was like, that's very, very prepared. I like that. <laughs> I try. I try to make it fun, you know. Yeah. <laughs> So what was it like shooting in Savannah? It's haunted, you know. Yes, I heard that. I was I had never worked in Savannah before. Uh, so I was really excited about that because um, I read, you know, in the Garden of Good and Evil and was excited to explore the city. Um, the people were great. The food was great. I, I had a great crew down there. Um, I'd love to go back. Yeah. So... Kara, talk about your bonding with Elle. Of course, you're playing her mom. So did yeah. you hang together? Did you bond in any way before? Um, you know, we didn't have um, uh, time to really rehearse prior to shooting. Um, but, you know, we all, I think all the cast that was drawn to this project was a particularly, um, thoughtful and sensitive about the material. It seems like they gathered like very like-minded people. And I felt like upon, you know, meeting Elle, first of all, you know, she's, I, I've loved her work prior to this, but for, for being such a young actress and taking on this transformation, you know, watching her day after day and week, you know, the physical transformation, the emotional depths she had to go through. And I don't say this lightly, I was so Sometimes I'd just be watching her in a scene and think, oh, right, my line is next because I'd be so lost in what she was doing. Um, it was really, um, you know, work and professionalism and, and a gift that she has that I feel like is beyond her years even. Yeah. Are you a mom yourself? Yes. I have a nine-year-old, just turned nine-year-old daughter. Oh, so that must have been a nice little transition for you to make. Yeah, you know, I think that, um, you know, becoming a mom changes you. You don't know how it's going to change you, right? You think, I only want one child, and you have one child, you want more, several. You think you're going to want a big family, you're one and done, right? Everyone's experience is very unique. But I found that when I became a mom, and you hear a lot of people say this, it changes your whole, it changes you, your perspective on the world. Um, things become very focused. And I think, you know, approaching a role as, as something like this as Gail, I, I was very interested in it in the role of technology and social media, particularly on young girls, because I think my daughter's just behind, you know, maybe will be in a safer place because of this generation that I almost feel like is the guinea pigs or the guinea pigs of the, the technology experiment, right? Because we didn't know how it's going to affect everybody because it's so new. Um, and so I was really excited to explore um, being part of, of this story that explores technology and mental health and, and teenage relationships and loneliness. Yeah, so let's break it down a little bit. First of all, with the social media, how do you feel about teenagers and social media and what sort of uh, precautions should be taken there? Yeah, I mean, I try to be a very positive person. So I look for the good things in it, right? Like I love seeing pictures of my friends' families and vacations and being able to talk to someone across the world, right? And then I think what there have been, you know, published studies now that, you know, there's an unrealistic expectation out there, right? Things are, there's this, this false reality and girls are, who are already at a vulnerable stage of growing and changing, particularly, and teenagers that, they're seeing a, something that's not real in their Instagram or TikTok or whatever. But I think it's just um, having more face-to-face -face conversations, right? Because what we see here is this is a relationship that developed over the phone, over text, right? And as a way technology is supposed to give us more time and bring us closer, and it can, what we see, the dangers of it is that it isolates people, makes people lonelier. Um, and it's, figuring out a way to connect because it's not going away. Here's the thing. We're not ditching it. We're not going back to it. It's going to be part of our lives. So how do we, um, how do we exist with it and make it a healthy part of our life as opposed to, you know, seeing something like this where the texts were weaponized. Right. 
Yeah, yeah. And of course, as you mentioned, the mental illness and the suicide is also a yes. very, very real problem. Yeah. So talk about how maybe this film is like a cautionary tale in a way. Um, what I, I really um, mattered to me a lot was that, you know, the show, the producers consulted the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention, as well as the National Eating Disorders Foundation. So, you know, there was great care and thoughtfulness put into portraying this, right? So um, I just think, you know, something like this can bring up the conversations of mental health, that people will feel more comfortable talking about it. Um, I think the stigmas are slowly eroding um, and that we look at it as part of our overall wellness. You know, we get our teeth checked, we get our eyes checked, we, you know, we get blood work done. So mental health should just be part of, regular care and that we check in then you know I think this idea also of loneliness that even though we are so connected in a way it's it's also created little isolated orbits right and making more time to um spend more time together outside of our devices yeah I bet you gave your daughter a huge hug when you got home <laughs> Well, I'm very strict about the screen. She hates me. So I'm t I told you, you'll thank me someday. You'll tell the story. I'm so glad my mom put custodio on my thing. I'm, I'm, she's, she just thinks I'm the strictest mom in the world, but I, I see my friends who have older kids, right? The teenagers. Um, and I would be on somewhere. I'm like, don't be a screen zombie. You know, we go walk and we're like this. Could we talk about zombies? So I'm like, don't be a screen zombie. Don't be a screen zombie. And We'll see. You can only control so much. I think what you learn as a parent is you do the best you can and they're going to do what they're going to do, right? You hope that yeah. you planted a good seed. So what do you hope that audiences come away with after they see the girl from Plainville? Um, after watching the girl from Plainville, I really hope that um, we can talk more openly about mental health without judgment and um, just, you know, be able to maybe think about people in our life uh, who might be going through something and being there for them um, and, and our own selves. Like if, you know, I think it's very hard to ask for help. I think we think it's a sign of weakness and uh, to ask for help, particularly with, if you're struggling with depressive thoughts or suicidal thoughts, there's nothing stronger than saying, hey, I need to talk or I need some help and starting right there. And I do find actually, and I will say this, that when you ask for help, you actually empower people to care for you and it help makes them feel good and also gives them permission to also perhaps reveal what they're going through. Like if you're going through grief or something hard, actually when you open up to people, it allows other people to share what they're going through and you can help each other. Absolutely. Thank you. So nice to meet you. Thank so you. So nice to meet Aaron. you, Robin. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. I want to tell our story. Always new. Always refreshing. Always candid. Always billing about. Robin Milling delivers what celebrities are saying to you. To you. To you.